For the past four weeks, I've given all the 27 starters a Paradox Evolution. This means that I've also evolved your favorite starter. So sit back, relax, and enjoy my 27 evolutions. Like always, I first need to mention that we use the tracing method in order to stay close to the original designs. I have to say that I didn't really struggle on this piece. It was kinda nice we had a direction to follow from the start, instead of having to come up with an entirely new concept. It was also fun to build out the concept even further by making his features bigger, like his teeth, the neck color, some of his claws and the points on his knee. For the colors I decided to use a darker version of the colors we used on Froki because in my opinion this makes him look more experienced and older. I'm still very much in love with this color palette, I just really think the bright pink stands out perfectly to the dark blue color on its body. Sharpened Gunk It isn't common for a Paradox Pokemon to evolve. Some more research is needed to better explore this phenomenon. Spiky Bubbles is the first species we've seen evolving, but rumors say that others are soon to follow. It seems that this version is a lot faster and more intelligent. Its poison's chemical structure changed to include a toxin that can put its enemies to sleep after some time. This makes it easier for them to chase down and defeat their enemies. I am extremely happy how this piece turned out and it was nice to build out our first character a bit. I also really like the shinies for this line because they look quite similar to their regular forms. I was kinda hyped to make this piece since I learned a lot because of all of the feedback you guys gave me. A lot of you pointed out that future forms don't need detached limbs but you could just add hinges to the parts on their designs. This was really helpful and gave me some new insights. I do quickly need to say that if you don't like my pieces, it doesn't help to just call them awful. <laughs> I can't make them better if you don't tell me what you dislike on them. So just use constructive criticism in order for me to make some designs you might actually like. Having that out of the way, the drawing went pretty smooth. We wanted to portray the electric typing a bit more clearly, that's why I decided to make some of his features have sharper and pointier edges. I did also think about making the lighted areas yellow, but I didn't want to stray too far away from Rowlet's design, so it just went with the green color. Iron Wing Evolution made this Pokemon lazier and more selfish, which is the opposite from its previous stage. Despite that, they become wiser and share that knowledge with anyone who treats them with respect and honor. They seem to be intelligent enough to operate some of human technologies, though only when they are really bored and don't have anyone near to share their knowledge with. Some of their species were seen needing small groups of their previous stages, acting as a guide. I think this is a perfect second stage to our friend Iron Hood. I especially like that he looks kinda sassy, which really fits the know-it-all personality. I think this shiny looks incredible as well, and I would 100% hunt this thing. This was one of my favorite designs out of all of the first stage starters we made, so I had to do my best to make it look amazing. The one thing I definitely wanted in this design was the jet-like feet. Since this is a second stage, which are mostly a bit awkward, I thought it would be a good idea to make him a worse flyer than his predecessor. I did this by pointing both of the jets to the opposite side, in order to make him look a bit wobbly. For the arms I decided to use hinges again, instead of giving him floating hands. I do have to agree with you guys on that point, it instantly looks more robotic. For the colors I decided to keep the yellow parts the lighted areas, but I did still want to have the flame sombrero as well. It's just a very big part of his identity and it just wouldn't look the same without it. You could say that I could have made it metallic, but I don't think we had to change it since it's still a fire type. Iron Scorch When this Pokemon evolves, the excess energy is formed into an egg shape and sits on top of Iron Scorch's head. This Pokemon lights its own head with thermal energy to keep the egg warm and otherwise it might go out. If this happens, the Pokemon itself will turn off until it's exposed to a heat source again. This suggests that it uses the egg to power itself. It does appear to be insecure about its new gained weight, which also seems to affect its flying ability. Man, I'm actually very proud of myself. I've learned so much since the start of this challenge and my designs are getting better and better. I can't wait to evolve the second stages because those designs are gonna be sick. For this design I struggled a bit because the first stage had a detached body part and I didn't really know what to do with the tails of this one. I eventually just decided to keep them attached 
because the pose looked a lot more balanced in this way. I know this design doesn't change a lot, but Iron Finn didn't either. This makes me think that you don't necessarily have to make big changes to make a good design. I think the gloves, rubber patches and especially the eyes gives him such a robotic look that he doesn't even need anything else. I've always loved Hoenn starters and by seeing this dude be so happy, I love them even more. <laughs> Iron Wake, similarly to Iron Finn, this Pokemon seems to be made for the purpose of research. It can navigate very well in wet areas like swamps. With its highly sensitive paws, it can pick up items of interest in order to scan them for the chemical components. It is unsure what or who all this information is for. I am so happy with this piece. You just can't hate on his cute face. I do have to say that I'm very curious to see what this evolves into now. <laughs> for this piece I wanted to continue the changes we made for Totodile. I extended his brow to give him a caveman look, which really fits Crocodile, since his body markings already look like the outfit from the Flintstones. I also made his tail longer and his jaw bigger as well. This gives him an unbalanced look, which fits his second stage perfectly. It also gives him a reason to eventually evolve into the more optimized Crocodile we know and love. I also extended the spikes on its back because I might want to move into a Spinosaurus with a huge jaw for the Ferreligator. For the colors I decided to make them just a tiny bit darker than the colors of the first form. Spiked Spine, unlike its first stage, this Pokemon seems to be less aggressive, but don't get fooled by its act. While it may look like it's lazing around, it always keeps an eye on its surroundings and patiently waits until prey approaches. When their prey is within range, they use their incredibly strong jaws to take them down, which proves that they can be just as fierce, if not fiercer than their first form. I think that this will be a perfect fit as a second stage form, but it does put a lot of pressure on the final design. If that one is good, the entire line will look fire. Well, actually water. <laughs> This was the first Pokemon we designed last time, which means that it could definitely use an improvement. I've learned a lot since then, so I wanted to give Bayleaf something extra instead of only turning his leaves pink. I decided to do this by giving a large leaf color, just like Meganium's. I also added leaves to his chin in order to give myself the option to do something with it for the final evolution. My goal for Meganium is to turn it into our first Dragon Fairy type. Mega Ataria not included of course. For the colors I did still want to use the pink flowers because that will be the main reason we can use that specific typing. I'm sorry I mostly talked about his evolution, but this design is just waiting to be evolved and turned epic. Fierce Flower. This Pokemon is a perfect example of how outward appearances can be extremely deceiving. This Pokemon is a true savage and has a brutal nature hidden behind the facade of its plain and simple looks. When angered this Pokemon will take on anything on its pad, using its sharp leaf to slice through its enemies. Like I said, this Pokemon really needs to get an evolution, but I am still happy with this design. It's simple, but effective. For this piece I wanted to go into a Velociraptor kind of look. I wanted to do so because I felt like our first drawing showed quite a few dinosaur traits. This is why I decided to give him claws, teeth and a purple tongue again. We also made his leaves a bit spikier, which fits the past paradox theme perfectly. Now I did still want to portray his grass typing, but he is going to be a dragon poison type for his final evolution. This is why I shortened the leaves, which gives us room to make them look like leafy spikes on Sceptile. It took me a while to find the perfect shape for his tail, but I do think it's a great detail and it definitely fits the dinosaur look we're going for. For the colors I went with a darker variant of green and made the red way brighter. I did this because poisonous animals usually have very bright colors to warn off predators that they aren't food. Bright colors can also be used for intimidation, which this Pokemon is not afraid to use. I do quickly want to say that this Pokemon is rather venomous than poisonous, but the theory behind it still affected my color choice. Ivy Raptor. This Pokemon can be found deep in jungles. It uses its sharp claws to climb up trees and hides her until it can leap out onto unsuspecting prey. Its tongue is said to be coated in a special toxin and one swift lick can leave the prey completely immobilized. 
This Pokemon is so awesome. Furious Gecko was actually one of my favorite designs out of the first batch, and I think Ivy Raptor is a perfect evolution for him. I got a lot of feedback on my future forms. A lot of you didn't want me to detach limbs, but in my last video a lot of you actually missed them as well. This made me realize that you don't always have to detach limbs on these designs, but if you do it properly, the designs will actually benefit from it. I also started working with reference of the real Paradox Pokemon, which gave me a lot more insights on future forms. A few of these tiny details are the segmented tail, toes and fingers. I also noticed that they have wiggly round parts on their body and I think that is supposed to portray a rubbery texture. With all of these elements combined, I think we've made another perfect future form. For the colors I referenced Iron Monkey, because I just want to keep the evolution line aesthetic the same. Iron Knuckles. After evolution, this Pokemon gains a huge boost in its fighting skills and starts to train on everything it sees. This makes them extremely dangerous because their intentions are not to help, but to harm others. It does appear to lose some of its fighting spirit once it has reached a certain level of skills. At first I wanted to name this guy Iron Fist, but that name is so good that I wanted to keep that for Infernape's form. I know a lot of you guys still don't like these shinies, but come on, a robotic monkey? That's awesome! This evolution line will probably turn out to be the most unique one out of them all. I know it doesn't necessarily follow the paradox rules, but in my opinion these colors make them look way better. We of course already had a good concept to follow, but I did still want this design to feel like War Turtle. I tried to accomplish this by making the spikes on its head emulate the wings he usually has. Someone in my chat suggested that we'd also make his shell a bit more spiky and that made the design so much better. I did struggle a bit on its tail again because it's just such a weird shape and I'm still not the best at drawing shapes in a 3D atmosphere. Like I said for the colors, we didn't change much from the first form. Hardened Tuto, <laughs> the paradox Pokemon. Its armor became much harder due to its evolution. It lost the battle against other Pokemon of the same species. Sometimes parts of their armor break, but it appears that they can easily fix them with the help of some fresh mud. I think this design looks amazing. It might give off a little bit of flying type energy, but so did Wartortle, and he wasn't one either. I'm still not that happy how our future form of Oshawa turned out. This is why I had to change some things up in order to make this evolution actually into something that looks cool. I tried to achieve this by switching up which parts would be the lighted area. I also converted his arms into robotic ones, so he would instantly look more like a robot, unlike his first form. This wasn't enough though. Our current design didn't feel like it would fit the eye typing at all, so I came up with the idea to give him an actual sword. I knew I could do this because Iron Valiant does the exact same thing. I'm actually very happy we decided to do this because this gave the design the extra thing it needed to be complete. For the colors I kept most of them the same. I did play around with making the shells light it up as well, but the design would have lost a very important accent color, so we moved away from that idea. <laughs> Iron Edge. This this Pokemon seems to be so strict with itself, it sets up a training schedule where it even schedules the time it spends on standby mode. It practices with its high school swords daily and even though it's a robotic Pokemon, it seems to greatly respect the warrior spirit and inspires to become a master of the sword itself. I am so happy with this upgrade. It really shows how much I've grown since the start of this challenge and it makes me so hyped that I'm getting better. I still really love the design I made for Litten, so I actually felt confident to make this into a banger as well. For the first stage we added quite a few details, which made him look a lot hairier. I wanted to continue this trend because that really sells the feral look we're going for. I do want to mention that we made the first stage into a fire steel type, but I didn't want to go into the steel direction, so we changed him into a fire ground type. This also resulted in a replacement of his long claws, which we changed into big fire claws. I think that is way more epic, but we did still keep his long fangs. I just wanted to keep this option open to maybe transform Incineroar into a saber tooth like cat. I already got a bunch of requests to keep him quadrupedal, 
so I will definitely have to look into that for the evolution. For the colors we just referenced the first stage and we made them just a slightly bit darker. I think the shiny for this piece looks awesome as well, because we swapped the orange flames for blue ones. Burning Claws! Upon evolving, this Pokemon splits off from the group of flaming fangs to live on their own. The condensed energy around its claws makes it extremely efficient at climbing and digging. It's estimated that it would even be able to dig through the frozen dirt in the tundra if it wanted to. When this Pokemon finds its food, it prefers to take it up to higher places and buries it so others can't get to it. I am so happy with this piece. It's probably one of the best ones we've made so far and I would 100% get this thing on my team. I definitely wanted to keep the same aesthetic the first form had. I achieved this by making his neck into blades instead of sides. I then decided to make the leaves on its tail float in order to give the rest of the design a little bit of space. Since this Pokemon is based upon a snake, I thought it would have been a cool idea to segment his entire body. I think it looks awesome and it's definitely something I picked up by looking at the reference. I didn't change any of the colors either, but I did decide to add the lighted areas into the leaves on its tail as well. I thought the design would benefit from a bit more color in it. Iron Blade. This mysterious machine believes it's superior to all other Pokemon and humans. It tries to command them and it throws tantrums when they deny its commands. Only the best trainers are capable to use Iron Blade as it's thought to be impossible to train. I must admit that this color scheme makes him look a little bit like corn. But a beautiful looking piece of corn then. I am very curious to see what we'll do with his evolution because this line is sick so far. This design went by pretty quickly because we had quite an easy concept to work with. I did think about changing it up a bit by giving him a rocket launcher as tail, but that would have been more fitting for a future form, so we just turned the spikes on its head to ears and we gave him a scorpion like tail. The rest of the changes were mostly me trying to use the changes we made for Chespin, like the piece of fur in the middle of its body and the poisonous teeth. We also tweaked the green parts again to emulate the armored look we had for the first stage. The goal for this Pokemon was to make him feel stronger and a lot more defensive. I think we managed to do so because that tail definitely looks like it can withstand a lot more shots to it. At first I wasn't really sure about this design, but I had the exact same feeling for Venomous Needle. This feeling disappeared for both of these drawings when I put in the shading, because it looks sick now. Barbaric Thorn This Pokemon seems to be a predator of an ancient world. It's able to shoot thorns covered in a unique unique toxin that will paralyze its target, which it would then drag away into its burrow before tearing it apart with its sharp fangs and claws. One dart is said to be enough to fully paralyze a full grown salamence. Quilladin is still one of my least favorite starters out of them all, but this design made me dislike him quite a bit less. But quite a bit less will probably still keep him at the bottom tier. <laughs> I didn't want to just convert him into a robot, but I wanted to add something to the design as well. We weren't really sure which typing the first form should have, because I didn't really think about it while creating the design. This is why I added the ribbons to this design to portray a ribbon dancer. I thought this would be a fitting direction to go to, since the entire evolution line is supposed to be a bit elegant and I think elegancy fits the fairy typing quite well. I did get to the point of having to decide if I wanted to continue detaching his wings because we've learned that it isn't necessary for a good future design. For this piece I did actually decide to do it because I loved the idea of the Pokemon dancing fluently without being limited by the capability of regular wings. We also added a few rubber patches and dark metallic features so it would look even more like an evolution. I made the color for the lighted area a bit lighter than its regular form as well because I don't like to use dark colors for that feature and and I think it would be a good segue to the final form. Iron Grace. It is theorized that this Pokemon has been created for the sole purpose of entertainment. It uses its glowing ribbons to nearly hypnotize the crowd, with a combination of beautiful lights and soothing movements. It is a calm and very proud Pokemon, but in a rare occasion of being booed by an audience member, it loses its cool and will kick them with its powerful legs. I think this design looks awesome. 
I especially love the tiny detail of the added ribbons, and this feature will probably be the main focal point for his final evolution. I hope you're enjoying these evolutions so far, and if you do, consider subscribing. I told you guys that if you managed to hit the 7500 subscribers before the end of the 21st of May, I would make a tutorial on how I draw these Pokemon. We're not there yet, but I will move that deadline to the 11th of June, so do your best and enjoy the rest of this video. Up next is the evolution for Iron Hops. Like I've mentioned quite a few times before, this piece is my least favorite of them all. I know I would probably be able to fix it with the current amount of knowledge I have, but let's just use this knowledge on the evolution instead. We gave the first from a fire flying typing, and even though he doesn't really look like a flying type, I still think it works with the lore we wrote for him. This is what I want to do for a boot as well. The biggest change we had to make for this piece was to make sure we didn't fill his entire face with a dark color. We achieved this by adding in the screen, but still keeping the nose part separated. For the ears I did decide to make them float again, but I didn't want to just make them float like we did in the first form. I tried to make a base on its head, so it still kinda looks like it's attached, but it's actually not. I also got more feedback on my latest two videos, saying that my future forms still use too many round shapes in them. This makes them too organic, and it doesn't sound like a robot as much. This is why from now on, I'm trying to make some of their features a little bit more blocky or sharp. Not all of them though, because I do think you need to keep using round shapes, but we just have to find a good balance for it. Iron Kick, just like its previous form, this Pokemon generates a lot of fire energy. It seems that they've also developed a way of flying, instead of only floating. It appears that they can use their generated power to push them forwards with their ears. This way of flying is very slow, and scientists first thought that they were still just floating. I think we've definitely upgraded Iron Hub's design. It is missing a rubbery patch on its design, but I just wasn't able to find a place where I could add it without it getting too cluttered. At first I wasn't really sure if I wanted to bring back the Dilophosaur like neck color, because it isn't the most pretty thing. I did try a bunch of different things, like just a few spikes or only at certain regions, but the piece just didn't come together. I even tried the silhouette method and we did eventually bring back the neck color. <laughs> to be fair, it doesn't look too bad and it does fit the evolution line very well. We also enlarged the back of its head because this makes the design look a lot less developed, just like a caveman. Other changes were bigger arms and claws, a bigger and spikier tail and a horn on its nose. The color stayed basically the same as regular Charmeleon, but we added a red accent color just like we did for Charmander. To finish up the piece we added the skill brush again and I think it looks awesome. Primal Flame. This Pokemon seems to be a ruthless predator of an ancient world, rivaled by few and feared by many. Primal Flame is extremely powerful. Its skills and claws can reach up to 1000 degrees Celsius, which it uses to burn down its enemies. I am not really sure about this piece. One side of me absolutely adores it, and the other side thinks it's a bit ugly. This was one of those designs where I just flew through the process. We did make a mistake with the typing for its first stage that we had to rectify. We made Iron Pengu a water steel type. But that is kinda boring since his final evolution usually has the typing as well. This is why we decided to swap the steel typing to a water electric type. We might bring back the steel typing for his final evolution, but we'd combine it with the electric typing instead of water. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk a bit more about the design itself. The first stage actually had his arms detached, but I didn't feel like that would work for this piece too. This is why I decided to scrap it and add a few details to make the design look interesting without those kind of arms. We gave him shoulder patches, added black parts to the end of his arms and gave him the rubber patch on its belly. I connected the dots on its belly with that rubber effect in order to sell our wanted typing. For the colors we just used the regular colors of Primplop and referenced the lightest colors of Iron Pengu. Iron Waddle. This Pokemon is thought to be a helper for Arctic rescue teams. It uses his sharp flippers to dig through snow and ice and its electric powers to illuminate the land in snowstorms. It is capable to provide someone in need with water and can also heat up its body so they can stay warm. I love this design very much. This is a trademark piece for my Paradox Mons. 
They change a lot, but they don't. This was one of the fan favorite designs out of the first batch, and I'm still very happy with it as well. It was actually very easy to transform Florigato into an evolution of my own creation. I just changed all of his features into the exact same features I gave Sprigatito. Take the eyebrows, lightning bolts, pointy leaves, and the main for example. Someone in my chat told me that the regular form actually uses its pin as a yo-yo. This sparked another idea in my brain. No pun intended. <laughs> we removed this pin and we gave him an electrical yo-yo, which finished this piece perfectly. It did take me quite a while to make, but that was mainly because he just had a lot of details. The colors didn't change much either. We used the regular colors and changed the accent color from pinkish to yellow, just like we did for the first stage. Masked Zipper. This Pokemon is very unpredictable and seems to lose interest in a heartbeat. It is also able to manipulate the static energy generated from its fur to create powerful shocks. Whenever it saved up enough energy, it can use this energy to create an orb of plasma. This orb is extremely dangerous and explodes on impact, yet it seems to like playing with the orb. I like this design a lot. We didn't use many electric type colors, but it still easily reads as an electric type. Sometimes a good shape language portrays a typing better than the colors ever would. For this piece I went hard on all the blockier and pointier shapes. This made such a big difference that it made me sad I didn't do this earlier. We also took some inspiration from Iron Valiant and we made the middle part of her body into the rubber texture. Further changes were the segmented legs, hands and we changed her stick into the lighted area as well. I did think that I made another mistake by making Iron Fox into a fire psychic type but now that I think about it, it could actually be sick to turn the final evolution into a psychic dark type. Imagine an evil looking robotic dark mage Delphox, a mouthful but that would be awesome. For the colors I used a dark color for her legs and just kept the yellow and red colors the same. Iron Torch. This Pokemon seems to be wary of human contact. Researchers have not been able to get close to one yet. It appears to use illusions in order to mislead any danger coming in their way, which makes it almost impossible to catch. I think that this design might be the closest design to a real Paradox Pokemon. I really think that Pokemon might have used a similar design for Braxton if they did actually decide to make it into a future form. This design started out as a big struggle. We were removed the leaves on its back, which made him lose a big part of his identity. I don't think it always has to be a bad thing, but we definitely needed to bring back at least some of those leaves into the design. We managed to do so by adding them to its belly, a little bit like chest hair. We also gave his head an extra armor feeling and made his shell look like the beginning of Rocky Mountains. I think this is a perfect transition into the final evolution I have in mind. This version is still a grass rock type and I'm planning to make Torterra into a rock ground type instead. Imagine Torterra not as a walking forest, but as a walking set of mountains. I think that would look sick. I also added other armor pieces and we kept the rhinoceros horns to make the design feel even sturdier. The colors we used were just a darker variant of the colors of Thorny Twig. We did also play around with a red eye instead of the yellow one, but that just didn't look good, so we eventually changed it back into a yellow one. Mossy Cliff! Unlike his first stage, this Pokemon likes to hunt by laying still and blending in with nature perfectly. It can go long periods without food because it only moves if it's absolutely necessary. Only the few trainers that have been able to convince this Pokemon to be caught have seen what an unmovable powerhouse this Pokemon actually is. I think that this Pokemon received the most name suggestions from my community of all the pieces. A lot of them were fantastic and I just want to thank everyone who left a comment for these names. I thought it would have been difficult to evolve the first stage since we based it off of Mega Venusaur. Luckily this was not the case. Someone in my chat suggested to implement the design of Gigantamax Venusaur and I thought it would be a cool way to still use one of those forms but make it different than the Mega. I do have to say that I struggled quite a while to get the plan on his head right. It was a difficult shape since we had to try to give it a 3D effect. Once I was happy with the shapes, I got the idea to make the leaves into rocks. This was a perfect way to make him feel more like the grass rock type he actually is. We did have to find a way to still make him look a bit like his first form. That's why I brought back the spikes 
and I decided to decorate his back with a desert like flower. I did get to a place during the sketch where I wasn't really sure if this piece would come together. This completely changed when I put in the desert colors. I especially love the decision we made for the leaves and the color palette just finishes it up perfectly. We did experiment with a green eye because the Gigantamax form uses that, but the color didn't fit the design, so we made a red variant. For the shiny I didn't want to use the color shiny Ivysaur uses because that didn't look good for the first form either. We just gave him the regular colors of Ivysaur and I think that looks sick. Flowered crown. This Pokemon uses its fine to grab birds out of the air. Since it evolved it is even more aggressive to other Pokemon, but it is still very friendly to humans. It does appear to have tamed its anger issues in battles, but can still sometimes lose control. To be fair, this was the design I dreaded doing the most. I just thought it would be difficult to make him look different from its first form, but I think we nailed it. This was an easy design to make, since Brion is basically almost the exact same design as Poplio. The only hard part of this drawing was to figure out how to implement a rubber patch into its body. We also played around with robotic features onto its flippers, but I felt like it didn't really fit the design. There weren't many other changes, except for the gloss, the lighted areas and a screen onto its face. For the colors we just went for a slightly darker blue for its body. We did this because the lighted areas wouldn't stand out as much if the body had such a light color. Iron Braids, like its previous form, this Pokemon will help divers during underwater missions. It will provide them with companionship and can lift up any debris using its psychic powers. They are also known to help children learn to swim by paddling with them and lifting them out of the water if anything goes wrong. I wouldn't say this form is as good as the first form was, but I do think it's a fitting evolution for it. This piece was a perfect example of how sometimes you have to change the features of a Pokemon once you evolve it. I didn't want to keep the huge horns on its face and I also wanted to stay close to the colors regular Drizzle has. This resulted in a design which looks quite different from its first form, but I do still think it looks similar enough to feel like its evolution. I also wanted to change the typing of this line, because we came up with some cool lore for this Pokemon, so the water normal typing didn't fit him anymore. Our idea was to make this Pokemon into an egg poaching thief, which fits the dark typing perfectly. Just like the first form, we did have to make sure that he wouldn't look scared or weak, since Paradox Pokemon are a lot stronger than their normal counterparts. We achieved this by making him look a bit like an emo kid, but still capturing some smugness into the design. The colors were just a bright variant of his normal colors, and we just added a dark blue accent color to the mix. Repton Poacher. This Pokemon steals eggs of various species. It particularly likes stealing from neighboring Repton Poachers. If the Pokemon gets caught, there will be a big fight amongst each other, which usually ends in a Pokemon in critical condition. I really like the new direction we're going for this line, and it would be awesome to see what an evil Italian would look like. This was one of my least favorite pieces out of the first batch, because I felt like it lost too much of the cynical energy. This was mainly because we completely removed the light color of its body and made him black. We did still want to change some parts of its body into metallic features, but we had to find a good balance for it. We achieved this by adding gloves onto his arms, giving him a big rubber patch on his belly, and we decided to add a light metal accent to its design. I also made his ears a little bit pointier to sell the robotic theme a bit more. The rest of the design was just basically a regular Kulava, but then with the lighted areas instead of flames. We did add some yellow to the lighted areas in order to emulate the missing flames. When I put in the colors I instantly saw the difference the light color made in order to still feel like a Kulava. Iron Forge. This Pokemon is a very friendly and protective creature. It is no longer afraid to fight and it will protect Iron Quill and other small Pokemon. They love to help their trainers cook and their light shines the brightest when they're doing so. I think this piece is so much better than the Cyndaquil one we made. I really love the design we made for Tepic, so I knew I had to step up for this one as well. 
we decided to continue the features we used for the first form, like the electric ears, the belly patch and the unique tail. Someone in my chat suggested to make the light bulb into a lantern and I love that idea. I think it's a perfect mix of the fire and electric typing. It was actually my first time drawing such a literal 3D shape, but I do think it came together after some tweaking. I am extremely happy how the belly piece turned out. We referenced Iron Hands design and those little lines on top really give off metallic energy. I did also think about changing some of the yellow parts on its design into lighted ones. I did eventually move away from that idea because I noticed the yellow accent color is necessary for this color palette. This is why I added another accent color to the lighted areas because I still think it looked a bit flat on the first stage. Iron Lantern This big robotic pig is a popular companion with older trainers as it's usually grumpy and tired. It uses its lantern to provide light for their trainer and loves to read a book together. Even though this Pokemon can be quite stubborn, it's a formidable foe under the wing of an experienced trainer. This has to be one of the coolest designs I've made so far. I really love this line and nothing can top this shiny. I think we started going in a great direction for this line, but I'm not a huge fan of the Super Saiyan chicken look we went for. This is why I did want to bring back some head feathers, but I wanted to make them look a bit more casual. I achieved this by making it look like the feathers were combined into three tails. We also brought back his dinosaur looking tail and we decided to give him actual hands with claws in order to sell the dragon typing we're going for. The beak was actually quite difficult to make since we're looking at it from the front. I definitely still wanted it to look rough so I added small points to the inner parts of the beak and made it sharper in general. We also gave his feathers a small makeover and decided to give them a bit more flow. We did this to just add a bit more energy to the pose. For the colors I used brighter colors than the original because I wanted this Pokemon to be able to fight with flair. We also played around with different colored eyes. I eventually settled on a bright blue color and I really think this makes the piece pop. I know the orange color would have made for a more aesthetic design, but sometimes you just have to use a different accent color in order to give the viewer something to focus on. Flaring Strike, an avian from the past. Flaring Strike holds more power than it may seem. It can kick its legs at speeds of 50 km per hour and leaves its targets with severe burns. It loves to ambush other Pokemon and it seems to take pleasure in hurting others. I think this is a pretty cool design. Is it the best one ever? Probably not. But I do think it could be a perfect segue into an amazing dinosaur like Blaziken. For the final evolution for today, we're going to take care of Whacking Branch. Our first stage definitely wasn't a bad design. I just think it could have been better with a different color palette. This is definitely something we have to take into consideration for this evolution. A lot of real past Paradox forms look quite similar to Rockstar's and let this design be perfect for that. The goal for this piece was to make him look similar to a drummer but with the bones of his enemies. We tried to achieve this by making his hair a lot spikier, the leaves on his head to look like a mohawk, gave him wristbands and changed his stick into bones. I want to move away from the sticky mod we went for with Grookey, so I decided to make his ground features look a lot like hardened clay. We tried to do so by making those features blocky and by giving them bright orange colors. Speaking about the colors, I went for way lighter colors than the first stage and we made them look a lot less muddy. I think this piece is absolutely incredible and I just know you guys will love it too. I do quickly want to mention that the lore suggested by my viewers was so good for this Pokemon, I just had to make an extended version of it. Rocking Bones This Pokemon has a natural affinity for music. Valuing quality over quantity, it seems to be very particular about what bones it uses as its drumsticks. After the perfect bones are acquired, it makes sounds by hitting all kinds of surfaces and items with them. When it likes one sound in particular, it brings back the item to its layer to add to its collection of sounds. Once they start drumming on their collection, 
almost every single Pokemon in the jungle finds this Melody beautiful and has to see the conductor. Other Pokemon then offer gifts to Rocking Bones, such as berries, which it uses as food. I am sorry for this long lore, but I'm not. This piece will definitely be high up on my list of favorites now. I think that we've made some incredible designs, but it's now time for the final evolutions. Check out tomorrow's video for seven of them, and good.